Hey runners, Coach Elizabeth here. Today I'm talking all things omega-3 fatty acids. Do runners need them? Do they help us? Do they hurt us? Are they worth all the hype? When should you take them? When should you not take them? Tune in for all the details. So let's start with some basics. What are omega-3 fatty acids? We don't make those on our own. That's why they're called essential fatty acids, meaning we need to consume them in our diet. To say that they are crucial for our health is a bit of an understatement. We need them. We need them for brain health, heart health, and a whole bunch of things that I'm gonna go into in a little bit. But there are four common types of omega-3s, and I just wanna list those so that you know what we're talking about. If you want more information, you can absolutely search for that online, but just as a basic, we have ALA, that's that alpha linoleic acid, uh, EPA, ETA, and DHA. Now, the ALA you get from green leafy vegetables, uh, flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, that kind of stuff. Um, the EPA and DHA, those are our two most important ones um, that you want to make sure that you're getting in your diet, and those you get from the fatty fish, sardines, sea algae, krill oil, um, and that last one, that ETA, is found in things like roe oil, or that's the fish egg oil, um, or a very special kind of green-lipped mussel. Not super common, but those are the four types. Uh, you, while we're talking about omega-3s, I want to address the omega-6. So your body needs both, and you ideally want them in a one-to-one -one ratio, so omega-3s to omega-6. Unfortunately, the standard American diet or the diet that most of us are consuming is really heavy in those omega-6, almost a 20 to 1 or 30 to 1 ratio. So consuming essential fatty acids is important, but you want to make sure that you're really stressing those omega-3s because we don't get enough of them in our daily diet. All right, now while we're talking about omega-3 fatty acids, I want to talk about omega-6 fatty acids as well. Our bodies need both of these, but unfortunately we get a lot more omega-6s than we do omega-3s, and that ends up being bad for our body. The standard American diet gets us about 20 to 1 or 30 to 1 omega-6s to omega-3s, when ideally we want them to be more 1 to 1. So, vegetable oils, safflower oil, uh, some meat, poultry, eggs, those are high in omega-6 fatty acids, so you want to be sure to cut back on your consumption of those and increase your consumption of those omega-3s. So let's talk about a few of the benefits of omega-3s for the general population, whether you're a runner or not. The first one and most important is heart health. It helps with lowering cholesterol, lowering blood pressure, reducing your risk for heart disease or stroke. Uh, Omega-3s lower inflammation in the body. They help uh, to lower your risk of certain cancers. They help with brain health. This is another big one. So whether that's reducing mental decline or preventing Alzheimer's. And it's also super important for brain development in infants and young children. Okay, now let's talk about a few of these benefits from omega-3s that are runner-specific or endurance athlete-specific. The first being uh, the ability of omega-3s to help lower that post-exercise inflammation. So that's lowering CR, HSCRP levels in your blood. The next one would be uh, supporting your healthy bones and joints. So omega-3s can help with that calcium uh, absorption in the bone. It can also help with sleep. So I know you guys have heard me talk about how important sleep is for athletes and those omega-3s can help with vitamin D absorption as well as the serotonin production, which you know serotonin, that happy hormone to help you have a better, more peaceful sleep. So next up on the omega-3 benefits for runners is that it can actually help make that protein work a little better in your body. So around four grams a day or so, 
makes your muscles more reactive to the muscle building effects of those amino acids in protein. So you're gonna get a little more bang for your buck. Now, the last bit is very female specific. So it's important that female endurance athletes are taking in enough of those healthy fats in order to maintain proper hormone function. And omega-3s are an excellent source of healthy dietary fats to keep your body functioning the way that it should be and to keep you from preventing uh, amenorrhea, bone loss, calcium loss, all of that. Now, the other part, female specific, is to help with some of the symptoms that you would uh, with, the, with menstruation. So the cramping, the headaches, the weak muscles, the poor sleep, omega-3s can help with that. Omega-3s in a combination with some magnesium and a low-dose aspirin will help prevent a lot of those uh, monthly menstruation issues that female runners face. Now I know what you're thinking. Should I go out and buy a supplement? Should I change my diet? What do I do, supplement or not, if omega-3s are that important? I want to start by saying I am not a physician, so I am not giving you specific medical advice. This is just based on the current research, so if you are going to be changing your diet, by law I have to say, check with your physician first. Now, all that out of the way, uh, the best way to get omega-3s in your diet is to eat them in your diet. So supplementing should be your second, uh, your second priority. Now, what foods have the best uh, and highest content of omega-3s? Those are those cold water fish. So you have salmon, sardines, cod, tuna, scallops even. Uh, you wanna look for sea algae, krill oil, fortified eggs, and then coming down the list for some more plant-based sources, you have hemp seeds, flax, and chia seeds, and walnuts. With omega-3s, you're looking to get between two to four grams a day. That can end up equaling about two to three servings a week of those cold water fish that I mentioned, the sardines, the scallops, the salmon, that kind of thing. Now, if you're a plant-based athlete, you need to be especially uh, careful or concerned that you're getting enough. So make sure that you're looking at how much uh, omega-3s you're consuming and getting those in your diet. That is the best way to do it, the cleanest way, and my personal favorite way because all of those sources of omega-3s are delicious. Now, if you aren't meeting those daily requirements through your food, then supplementing is the best option. And as I said earlier, omega-3s really are important for heart and brain health. So be honest with yourself. If you're not eating that great of a diet, or you're traveling a lot, or you're, you, know, you have a family and they don't like fish, or any of those sources, then make sure that you're supplementing so that you're taking care of your body. In that respect, with supplementing, you wanna be careful. Look for a high quality supplement, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but make sure that you're not overdoing it either. So you're looking for about three grams a day if you're gonna be supplementing. So a few warnings when it comes to fish oil supplementation or consuming omega-3s in general. The first one is for pregnant women or women that are trying to get pregnant. Uh, some of those cold water fish sources can have higher levels of mercury. So especially if you're pregnant, you want to watch out and for what you're consuming in your daily diet and make sure that you're not raising those mercury levels. That's why supplementing might be a good idea for pregnant women. On the flip side, if you are at risk uh, of prostate cancer or if you are supplementing and you're not watching how much you're taking in, uh, men that take in more than that four grams a day have a greater risk, a 43% increase in prostate cancer. So don't over supplement thinking that if a little is good, a lot is better. All right, the next piece I wanna address when you're looking at supplements is quality matters. So, you've heard me talk about this before, but there are some websites, whether that's Labdoor, Consumer Lab, Examine.com, uh, the pharmaceutical, the NSP certification. It's important that you look at the quality of the fish oil that you're taking, so do your research and find a reputable brand 
that is actually including the right levels of EPA and DHA. And the last piece when it comes to supplementing or consuming omega-3s, have your blood checked so that you know where are your cholesterol levels, is it actually helping lower inflammation, just make sure that you're checking in to see that not only are you on track, but that nothing is off from any of the supplementing that you're doing. Do we need omega-3s? Pause. That sucked. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? So there you have it. If you liked this video, be sure and click the like button. Leave me a comment down below. Do you take omega-3s? Do you eat a really healthy omega-3 rich diet? Any tips or tricks for the rest of us? And be sure and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos. See you in the kitchen.